back back for Arfield. What a Berlin! Scott Arfield! He's been threatening that recently. And all the Burnley players run to the Darwin end. What a goal from Robbie Blake! Burnley's first goal in the Premier League is something very, very special. Wade Elliott has that change of pace and he's got away from Montgomery. It's the path of McCann and the follow-up finds the net. What a strike from Wade Elliott. A bolt from the Claret and Blue. I mean, if there's any justice in the world, Burnley would surely score from this corner. Swung right in there. Ball in there. Yeah! Michael Kennan! Oh, that's Come justice! On! That is justice at the Amex Stadium! Burnley a level and deserve to be! Hello everyone and welcome back to the latest episode of the Turfcast podcast pre-game show with me, Joel Redmond, ahead of our first midweek game of the season as we welcome Hull City to Turf Moor. Uh, Hull City side have started well, uh, to be fair, um, but we'll, we'll get into that. Uh, obviously, we've got a, a Hull fan ready and waiting, uh, a Hull podcaster to come in, chomping in the bit, ready to chat about their good start. Uh, but first of all, just a few housekeeping things as usual. Um, I just want to apologise. Obviously, I didn't manage to do the pre uh, the, the full time show after the Watford defeat. Um, I just I've just been working all weekend. I didn't get a chance. And as I've said before, there's just me. There's a couple of others. So a big shout out to Neil for coming on recently, uh, and a few of the others. Um, it's been good to get people back on. Um, but obviously, if if I'm not available to do a hosting sort of situation, then nobody else can do it. If there is anybody who wants to do some hosting stuff and, and come on and do their own shows, that'd be fantastic because I can't do one after the whole game either because I'm going to... I might be able to squeeze one in if I get home at a decent hour, but I don't think I will. I'll probably get home about 11 o'clock. Then it's too late then because I'm going to Prague in the morning after. So I don't want to be, be knackered for that. And who's going to watch it at half 11 anyway? Um, so there won't be one after the whole game either. Um, and I'm struggling to get a Blackpool podcast in. I might do a live one on Saturday morning because I'm in Prague until Friday night. So we'll see how that goes. Obviously, as well, I just want to send all my condolences to Lenny John Rose's friends and family. And Clarets as well. Obviously, every Burnley fan were affected by the news today that Lenny John Rolls had died. Obviously, we all we all knew about his illness, and so it wasn't a, a massive shock, so to speak. Uh, so to speak, but it's still upsetting. It's still not nice to see, is it? So, um, rest in peace, Lenny. Um, it, I, th- I was thinking earlier. I think he's the first Burnley player that's died that I've actually seen play because obviously he was only fifty-two. Um, so that's what. 20 years, no, sorry, 18 years older than me. Um, so I, I watched him, obviously, in the turnant days and things like that, as, as I'm sure you all did, or those of you of a certain age. And, yeah, sad to see, but obviously we all knew about his illness as well. Um, so it wasn't a big shock, but, yeah, it's it's still it's still really, really good, isn't it? Of course it is. But, of course, anyway, um, let's chat quickly about the Watford defeat. Obviously, first defeat of the season. That makes it one win, one draw, one defeat against two of last season's top six and a fellow relegated side. Um, I know there's been a few people panicking on the hashtags, as you'd expect, as you'd expect with any club. Um, But we need to be patient. It's a completely new style, a completely new ethos, an entire system overhaul uh, between Dyche and Jackson uh, and, of course, company. Company wants to play football. Um, He doesn't just want to lump it forward. Um, He he wants to flood the midfield and and do things like that. And he wants to play without a striker, it seems, at the minute, which is the only thing that I I am a bit critical about at the minute. Hopefully we'll bring one in. Dilap, maybe, um, but I believe he's going to start. We'll see about that. Um, But I do think that Jay Rodriguez coming back will help. Hopefully he starts tomorrow um, or later today, whenever you're listening to this. Uh, And Scott Twine will come back at some point as well, but I believe that's going to be mid-September or something like that. But them two will help, because at the minute it is just Ashley Barnes. And I love Ashley, um, but he is pretty much past it at the minute, I think it's fair to say. Um, 
But I won't say anything bad about him, as a lot of people are doing, because he's a club legend, and I don't think we should be doing that. And I've said that before, so I won't go too much into that. Um, but fingers crossed, we can. I think company got. I do, I do think company got the team wrong against Watford. Um, Costello, I don't think he should have started. Um, I don't think Barnsley should have started. If Jay was on the bench for me, he's fit enough to play, so I'll start him. And I would think that he'd make them changes this time. I, I think he'd probably um, drop Costello and bring Jay in for Barnes because it's going to be a tough one this one as well just like the Watford one was they've started well so they're going to be full of confidence no matter you know whether you add them down for relegation or mid-table at the start of the season or, or even top six as, as some people did predict to be fair um, but it's going to be a tough one regardless but anyway I've got work in 25 minutes and I know the whole fan that is waiting has got to go and do another podcast so I'm going to bring him in this is Nathaniel and he's from To Hull and Back podcast how are you doing mate? I'm doing very well how are you? Yeah, really, really good, thanks. So let's chat about Hull then, because obviously mm. we always like to bring an opposition fan in because I don't know anything about Hull. Um, you obviously are going to know quite a lot about Hull. So you've had a good start to the season. Is it two wins and a draw? Two wins and a draw, seven points. Yeah. But although you said um, your fans have been panicking, panicking on Twitter, ours have been as well, even though we've got seven points from nine. Really? Um, because it's, mainly because of the cup game. But yeah, yeah, I mean, but yeah there was, there that's was the fan base. There. there was the Bradford game, to be fair. But um, it yeah, talks about the start of the season so far because that's you know that's a good start. And I see Hull is uh, in a similar position to us in, in the sense that you've signed a lot of players. We've signed a lot of players. Um, so I was thinking that Hull and Burnley will be quite similar in the sense that we might start slowly and then pick up as, as the season's gone on. There's still time for us to pick up. There's still time for you to fade yet. We'll see. Um, but talk to me about your season so far. I know there's, um, is it Ant that's in the WhatsApp group? That I mean, he, he seems to be quietly confident pretty much every, that they're going to win pretty much the league. I, I think he's joking a little bit, if I'm honest. Half uh, joking. All fans seem to be a little bit confident. Is that how you're feeling at the minute? Well, I was very confident before the season or before pre-season started because the calibre of players we brought in was not only just way beyond what we expected and what we've had the last few years because of our new owner, Ajani Lajela, the uh, Turkish Simon Cowell. He came in, uh, the Alams went, so we were delighted about that and last season was pretty good, we, we stayed up. But yeah, I mean, everyone's been saying that this sort of new ownership the new story we're we're um, telling or, or, or hoping to, and it's going to take a few years. And um, you know, we weren't really sure about the manager either because uh, Shotter Avaladza um, has played in Scotland um, in his playing career, but had never managed in England before he came in in January. So yeah, um, I was confident that we could do well because the players we brought in were good, um, but they've been even better. Um, than what we expected, um, especially Seri, uh, jean Mikel Seri from Fulham. That was an amazing signing and a lot of other clubs in the Championship would happily take him. And uh, a lot of other fans thought we would never be able to get him. Mm -hmm. uh, same with uh, Oscar Estepinian, who scored two at the weekend, the uh, big Colombian striker who um, has scored 15 in Portugal last season. Um, and a lot of Turkish players as well, Ozan Tufan, um, especially looks amazing already. Um, and yeah, I thought it would be a slow start um, and performances have been a little slow. Pre-season started, we lost 4-0 to Leicester, 3-0 to Peterborough. And that was our last game before um, the opening fixture against Bristol City. But then in the second half, especially, we played very well, very dodgy against Preston. We didn't deserve anything from that. And then um, terrible cup defeat to Bradford City. But then, yeah, the big surprise was that... Um, We've kept this sort of momentum from that first game, at least beat Norwich City at the weekend. So yeah. um, I'm still not really confident. I don't really know what's going to happen because we've yeah. got, we, we will probably have about 15 new players eventually by the end of the window. Um, so yeah, really anything, anything could happen tomorrow. Yeah, like I said, it's very similar to us. We are about to make our 12th signing. We're expecting mm. a few more um, before the end of the window. Obviously, we've needed to do it in a similar way because we've had a lot of good players on the books who A, wanted to stay in the Premier League or, or B, we had to get them off the wage bill. There's no point doing it in two <laughs> years. You might as well do it now and then and then you know where you stand sort of thing. Um, but yeah, looking at your results, um, I, I see what you're saying. I can see why you're not overly confident just yet because Bristol City, I think they're a poor side and, and they'll be... Mm probably lower half mid-table sort of thing. So if you want to be knocking on the door at top six, then you have to be beating them at home. Preston, you know, to be fair to Preston, they've started well. I don't think they've conceded a goal yet. Um, so you, you drew there. Then there is the Bradford defeat. 
Um, but then it's, it's the Norwich one where I because at first I saw the Hull and the Brist uh, and the Preston ones, and then I watched the Bradford because it were on TV, weren't it? And I remember thinking, oh, yeah, they might be all right, top 10, maybe something like that. But then when you beat in Norwich, that's made me think, okay, maybe they do have a chance of top six. What what do you think for the season then? Are you thinking top six, even cheeky top two, or you or you just want to sort of like chill out a little bit, see where you are at the end of the window, and see if you can carry this momentum into say like October, November, and then and then go from there? Yeah, I mean, our, our squad, especially when we bring in a few new players just this week, I think there's four or five coming in, something mm. stupid like that. Um, the squad is very good. We've got international quality, and it's gonna, we're probably going to have, hopefully, four players at the World Cup. Um, they might not actually play, but I think they'll be in the squads, um, which is quite exciting. And uh, we've got a lot of, um, or we will have three Turkish internationals soon. So the squad's really good. Um, I think if we had, well, Guardiola, maybe that's a push, but someone like Chris Wilder, maybe, um, yeah. we'd do a whole lot better, perhaps. Although, you know, Schott has done well so far. Um, and it's so hard to predict. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, it, but we have started better than I thought. I thought it'd be very slow, um, and I didn't necessarily expect us to get two wins, let alone maybe just the one. Um, and it's still a very tough start. We're playing Burnley. West Brom, QPR, um, yeah, Sheffield cool. United very soon. Yeah. Um, Coventry who did well-ish last season. So it's, uh, we'll, we'll know after 10 games, we'll know a whole lot more and we'll have a lot of new players coming in. And also most of our new signings aren't fit enough or actually injured. Yeah. So um, the squad is going to be looking absolutely amazing in a month or so. It's just whether or not they can bed together and, the manager's the right person for the job. He, he could be, but I predicted um, 11th um, a few weeks ago before we played any games. I might want to push it up slightly higher now because that win against Norwich was really good. We played well. We, we weren't the better team necessarily, but we did play well against a, a sort of Premier League sort of level squad. Yeah. Or we could argue Norwich have never had a Premier League level squad because they go down every year. But... Um, yeah, I mean, maybe, maybe if you'd ask me now where we'd finish, I'd say something like ninth, perhaps. Um, but yeah, top two is, I think, a little bit um, extreme. And uh, I mean, maybe next year, but um, it's still going to be a long term project. Yeah, definitely. If you keep building, um, it, 100 percent, you can you can um, keep pushing and, and things like that. But um, one of my worries for our signings is we brought in a lot of players who haven't played in the English league before, you know, they've come from Belgium or, or Holland mm. or, or, or somewhere like that. You're doing something similar, but with, with Turkey, it yeah. seems. Is, is that not a worry to you that, you know, these players all... Uh, all right, you've just mentioned Tufan and another, a couple of others that, are, that have come in and done really well, but you're about to sign five more. Is that not yeah. a worry to you that, you know, they might take a while to bed in or they might not get used to the physicality quick enough? Because that, that, that's my worry when it comes to the Burnley squad. Yeah, I mean, it, it definitely can be. Um, I mean, some of them... I think some of them have played in England before. I mean, Figueredo from Forest had, Baxter had, um, our a winger, um, Ali Asayed Manesh, we signed him, but he, we had him on loan last year for six months. So he's played. Uh, Seri has won the league with Fulham. And then the others, uh, well, uh, and then we're getting Brentford's Dervishola as well. And of course, he's played in England, but not a whole amount. Uh, I guess one thing you could argue, though, is that even though they haven't played in England, they have played in other countries before, um, and they're not all just coming from Turkey um, straight to England. They've done well in Turkey or Portugal or Greece or um, the Czech Republic and some other countries like that. So, and, and France as well. So, he played in France. So, maybe um, as long as they've got that experience of going from one country to another and mm. doing well in a different league, perhaps it won't necessarily matter. But we're just hoping that. Because uh, it's it's much harder to sign championship quality players or um, players from the championship. I mean, because the in England the wages and the um, transfer fees you have to pay are so much higher. Yeah. But um, as I'm sure you found out, signing players in Belgium, you can get a better deal for the best one of the better uh, best players in that league. So we're just hoping that even though they've not got the uh, EFL experience, they the quality should be enough. I mean, two fan he's played. 65 games for Turkey. Hopefully, his quality is better than just um, the fact he's not played in England very much or in the Championship. Although, of course, 
he played for Watford, but they were rubbish. Um, but he, he's, I think he's already proven in Watford fans wrong. He looks a really great, one of the best midfielders in the league already. Maybe that's hyperbole, but hyperbole, but he's played really well. He's scored two goals basically already. Yeah. So that's more than he did at Watford. Well, I'm interested in seeing him play, to be honest, tomorrow, because I've heard a lot of uh, positive stuff um, regarding him, um, obviously, from, from yourself just now uh, and from Ant in the WhatsApp group. And that was going to be my next question. I was going to ask, um, who is, should we be looking out for the most tomorrow? Like, Who is going to be the, the player that is going to create the most, do the most for Hull? And I presume you're going to say a two-fan. Uh, yeah, I think it would probably be um, him or Seri. But then as Seri's injured, I can't choose him. Okay, um, that's good news for us. Is he, is most, he tomorrow? Yeah, most of our players are injured. I think we've got about 10. We're not the only club with that issue because I think yeah. the fact that pre-season was a week or, or a week shorter or started a week later, was it earlier? Yeah, it, it, been it, earlier. Started, it started late. Uh, yeah, sorry, earlier. But because our season last season, we're in a really bad position because of it. Our season last season was like an extra three weeks longer than the championships. And of course, we got relegated on the last day. So your Norwiches yeah. and your Watfords could have already planned for it. We got relegated yeah. on the last day, which was heartbreaking. Um, but yes. and it's and, and so then we had to quit like right championship. But everyone's on holiday now for three weeks. So yeah, it's it's been tough for everyone. So I, I, yeah, I see what you mean. And we've sound some players in like you said who, who aren't quite up to speed yet. Um, Scott Twine, he's currently injured. Um, Jay Rodriguez has been injured. Obviously, he's not a new signing, but he's been injured. He played against Watford at the weekend though. Um, so fingers crossed he's back. So what's up with um? Sorry then. Um, they've not actually said what it is. Um, I mean, the the thing is, we've signed a lot of free agents, which is a good deal. But if you're a free agent, you're not at a club doing proper pre-season. Yeah. So, um, I mean, uh, we've got Dokan, Cynic and Traore, who uh, we signed them. Uh, this is a Dharma Traore, but not the one from Wolves. Yeah. Um, he was from Turkey. And um, uh, both of them have already been injured before they've played a minute. And Seri's already injured, but I think it's just he's not fit enough to play another game, perhaps. Yeah. Or he's just some sort of calf strain. And mind you, you said there, though, Norwich had been planning for relegation towards the end of the season. They st they do that at the start of the season because <laughs> yeah, they expect probably. to go down. Yeah, so, probably. Yeah. You could say the opposite, though. They're probably already planning for a Premier League next season, but having said that, they've had a yeah. poor start, so it, maybe not, maybe not. It could be the first time that Norwich don't win the league when they're in the league for about 15 or, or, years. Oh, yeah. I think that that sort of um, pattern of Fulham and Norwich swapping places will stop this season. I think Norwich will stay down and Fulham will stay up. Yeah, I, I, I do, I've predicted Fulham to stay up. I've also predicted Forest to go down, though, but they looked good against West Ham. And now they yeah. just keep signing people. So Yeah, it's ridiculous how much they're spending because if they go down, they are gone. Like, that club is liquidating yeah. immediately. Yeah. I mean, I, I never want to see a club liquidated, but if no. they went down and they went into proper financial trouble, but I'm just sat there going, well, it serves you bloody right, doesn't but it? But then, you know, again, part of me wants them to go down because of that. The fact that. they're spending the money should mean they stay up, but you yeah. just never know. Yeah, well, Villa did it. All right, Villa stayed up, but they, they, they stayed up it's because close, of the technicality it? and mm. Fulham do it every year. Uh, and they go down most years. All right, this year, I think they will stay up. Um, I want to talk to you about Burnley because I always like to get opposition fans' opinions on the, uh, the club that I love, the, the town where I'm from sort of thing. What do, you, what do you think to what Burnley have done this summer and the direction that they're going in? Because it, it's it's just so different from what what teams and people are used to seeing for Burnley. It's obviously, it's a risk for, to get Vincent Company in, but I believe it's probably a risk worth taking. And it's also a risk, sort of like telling him to completely build an entire new squad. But again, it's probably better off doing it now than dilly-dallying over the next two years and drip, drip, dripping players in, you know what I mean? And, mm. and so it, it's interesting. I'm always good to get... Um, other people's opinions because I was at a wedding last week talking to a Port Vale fan. Not that his opinion mm. matters because he's a Port Vale <laughs> fan, but uh, he was like, oh, I think he's going to fail. I can't see how it's going to work. So, what do you think to, to what Burnley are trying to do this summer? Well, I mean, it sort of started last season because you actually started signing players from you know, other countries yeah, uh, rather than just sort of championship players. Um, so, because uh, it was Cornet and tried to sign. Uh, well, I mean, it was Weghorst as well. And, you yeah. know, one of, only one of those worked, but it, it's a huge change because, yeah, you go from Sean Dyche, um, who's been there for years and years playing sort of boring but very effective, obviously, football, not spending a huge amount of money, kind of playing 
long ball 442 and then you're going to Vincent company signing players from Belgium and other countries um, and trying to be a and of course not you're in a different division the the aim is different you're trying to get up so it would make sense um, to go more attacking and buy in these players um, and have Vincent company who's a you know a serial winner with Man yeah. City at least as a player. So yeah, I mean, of course you have it has the approach has to be different if you're in a different division with a different aim, but it will definitely take time to um to settle in just you know at the club, um and I mean you've sold a lot of players that I think were pretty good. I, yeah. I'm not hugely. I haven't really had a, a a proper look. I'm not. I think the Belgium league Belgian league is pretty decent. So if you brought in the best players from there, that would work. But it's a bit similar to City, where you're doing it with Belgium, and we're doing it with Turkey. You hope that these players can settle in, but you know you're hoping that the quality they've got in that league um, moves over to here. But um, I think it could work. I think I think I said Burnley would finish in the playoffs, but maybe not go up. I think that'd be a decent season, but uh, I'm not I'm not really convinced about any of the uh, relegated teams' chances. Because Norwich have started poorly, and Burnley, I'm, I'm not sure about the chances, although I haven't looked at them very much. I mean, Watford, I think, are selling all their players and maybe don't have the best dressing room. Yeah, I think well, I think Watford have done it the wrong way. I think the best way to do it is sell early so you know where you're standing, you know yes. what the squad is. If they're seller the last day of the season, Pedro and is it Saar that's left because Dennis has already gone? Then and Dennis has gone. I mean, Saar might be off the lead. Yeah. And then, yeah, yeah Pedro, they, they if just they, rejected if they get that. Rid of them, so on the final day of this, uh, the transfer window, then knackered. You scupper, don't you? Yeah. yeah. We, we was, we've done the opposite. We sold Lewis Potter. Um, we got the money, and then we've been able to replace after him. Hopefully, we don't need, lose Jacob Greaves. Um, he, he he might stay though, but um, his contract scenario or situations up in the air at the moment. Uh, yeah. Hopefully, we keep hold of him because then he'll be worth two or three times as much. Uh, next summer yeah definitely um what about what do you think about vincent company as a manager then i know he's he's you know he's he's been at Anderlecht for two and a half three seasons they he joined at a time when they had financial difficulty and managed to steady the ship but then couldn't really kick on but obviously now he's come back to england first time in the championship do you think he's going to do well do you think he's going to struggle well i mean i remember when he went there uh, that I think he started poorly, so I'm surprised he'd been there for three years. I thought he would have been sacked after a few months, but um, so that's obviously good. But then uh, my knowledge of uh, football in Belgium isn't great, but I thought that Anderlecht were one of the bigger teams, so yeah, I'm a bit are. surprised he hadn't won a trophy with them for the two and a half, three years he was there. So, um, you know, it, it could work, but uh, although he, he will obviously understand... English football because he's played here, but not necessarily as a manager. So I thought, you know, it's an interesting um, appointment. I'm not necessarily sure it's the right one, but um, yeah, it's going to be an adventure anyway. Um, regardless of how well you do, it's a, it's a different era. That's what you know. Yeah, uh, City definitely. fans are looking forward to. So you know, uh, why why not go for company? Why not? Could be fun. Yeah. It's, it's one I think it will work eventually. I just think we need to give him time. We need to stop panicking if we lose at Vicarage Road, for God's sake. You know, they, yeah. they just come down with us. We're yeah. going to lose games. We're going to lose games. Um, I w before we um, get into sort of like predictions of the league and things like that, I do want to sort of like get your thoughts on how you think the game's going to go tomorrow. Not not necessarily score, or I will try and get a score prediction off you, but mm -hmm. sort of like talk to me about your style and, and what sort of game you like to play. I know against Norwich, you only had 30% possession uh, and only had four shots on target compared to their 12. Um, but obviously you won the game. So is that something that you will look to do? Just try and not necessarily, not, I'm not saying part of the bus, but just sit back, let us have the ball and then counter attackers. I presume that's what you did against Norwich, looking at those stats. Yeah, um... I think a lot of that possession, well, it was it was quite uh, it was a bit closer to begin with, but in the last twenty minutes when we went two 0 up, um, we, we we did park the bus. We went five four one, but we started against Norwich with the four three three, sort of enforced by injuries again that we had to change formation. But um, and we we pressed a lot um, and we were counter attacking, um, moved the ball from the front to the uh, or back to the front quite quickly. 
Um, so we did play a whole lot better against Norwich than we did against Preston. But I think maybe the f- reason why the two games, or Bristol and Norwich were pretty good, and then Preston and Bradford were pretty rubbish, I think maybe it's a home and away thing. So yeah. I am expecting Burnley to have a, a lot more possession than us, um, probably similar stats to the Norwich game. Pretty sure, was it against Huddersfield you had most of the ball then? In every game so far, we've had like near 70% yeah. possession. I think it was 68% against Watford as well. Yeah. So I think it, it's something same. we'll look to do. Yeah, we didn't necessarily park the bus, but when you're playing against a, a team with you know that's come down from the Premier League and spent a lot of money, yeah, of um, although, of course, the Burnley team has changed a lot, perhaps more than Norwich. Um, I think, yeah, it'll, it'll be similar. You'll have the ball, but um, I think it'll be quite tight uh, scoreline-wise because I know neither team has really got f- flowing uh, attacking-wise yet. Yeah, what, what are your predictions then? Um, well, I predicted every game this season to be a draw. Um, so, And that's working so far. I haven't got any of them right. But well, yeah, I, on that. yeah. Um, but I said that was going to be an entertaining like two two. Ah, yeah, no, you didn't so, get it right. <laughs> um, I think yeah. Let, let's say another draw. I think maybe one one. But I think you'll have a lot of the ball. But as I said, I don't think either team's really flowing, uh, creating huge amounts of chances. Perhaps because yeah, you've not scored more than one right. In every and, game, and yeah, we've away one, from one. home, away yeah. from home, we've struggled. So I think. Uh, maybe two fan will score a worldie and um, Ashley Barnes penalty or something. Yeah, uh, hopefully Ashley Barnes isn't playing. Love the guy, but <laughs> it is past it, as I said earlier. Um, I I think we're just like a couple of performances away from clicking, and when we click, I think we'll batter someone. Do I yeah. think it'll be you? No, I'm thinking. Oh, good. I think it'll be Blackpool. I think we'll batter Blackpool, which yeah. will be very enjoyable. Um, mm. But I do think I do think we'll I do think we'll maybe start to kick on now. I'm not necessarily going to go on a 23 undefeated run like we did last time in the Championship, but start to get some results. I think it's going to be tight against you. I do think you're a good side. I think people are going to underrate you for pretty much the majority of the season. But I think it'll be time. And I think we'll, we'll sneak a win, I think. I'm going to go 2-1 to Burnley. And then maybe Dick Blackpool on, on, on Saturday, 4-0, 5-0. Watch this. We'll get beat. We'll get beat against mm-hmm. him now. If we get beat against Blackpool, then I will start worrying. Not panicking. The we can't panic. Championship. You never know what's going to happen in in the in any of the EFL leagues, really. Yeah. So, uh, but I mean, if we did lose two one and played better away from home than we had done in the previous games, I think that'd still be progress because we've yeah. already got more points than I thought we'd have. And um, if we could get maybe a point out of West Brom and Burnley. Um, our next two fixtures, I'd be very happy with that. Yeah, you like you said, you've got a tough run coming up. You've not had the easiest of starts. Yeah. Um, or at Bristol City and Preston, but then you've you've just beaten Norwich. To be fair, so you know, obviously, like you said, anyone can beat anyone. It's the old cliche in the Championship, yeah. but anyone can beat anyone. Um, before we do wrap up, um, final question. I promise, because I know you need to go and I need to go as well. To be fair, um, what are your predictions for the Championship then this season? I know it's a little bit up in the air because not, not many teams have settled. Who do you think is going to win it? Who do you think is going to finish second? And who do you think is going up in the playoffs? And then who do you think is going down? Uh, well, I remember what I predicted, although. After I predicted it, I um, I, I actually analysed it and thought I've made some terrible decisions here. Well, I said Sheffield United would would win the league because I really liked Jukanovic as a manager. Then I realised he wasn't their manager anymore. Um, but then I thought, well, um, Heckingbottom, if he'd been there all year, they would have done better. So yeah. um, I think you know he, he's obviously a good manager for them. So I think and they've got a very good squad. So. I think they'll go up. And then I said West Brom just because they've got such a good team. But then I thought, well, maybe they don't because um, they didn't do very well last year. And Steve Bruce, although he did very well at City, is he a bit past it? So um, unconvincingly, I'll say West Brom and Sheffield United to go up. And then in the playoffs, I think I said Middlesbrough, although they've also started badly. But I think they're going to spend a lot more towards the end of the window. So... Yeah, Middlesbrough. Middlesbrough brought in some decent players, to be fair. Oh, really? I should say us. We're going up. Yeah, and, and um, Burnley, of course. Yeah, all right, sure. Why not? Let's, let's just all go up together. That's what I said to mm. Watford lads at weekend. I'm like, let's just get promoted together. Yeah. I think I think I predicted, I can't, I can't remember what I predicted now, someone can easily go back to the show against Watford and say, why are you changing your mind? Um, mm. I think I did say Sheffield United and Middlesbrough, but I'm not a big fan of Eckingbottom, mainly from his time at Leeds. 
Um, he just he just lost it too quickly, and once he, once a few bad results go against him, it seems it seems to just all unravel. Um, so I don't want to predict anymore because I, it's just changing every time. But I, what I will predict is that Reading will definitely go down. 100%. Um, Blackpool, I think as well, will go down. And I, I also did think Birmingham, but I think that they now they've got new ownership, they might drag themselves away from it a little. Um, who else was there? Decent. Rotherham. Rotherham. Hmm. Well, yeah, I think Rotherham, Birmingham, Reading, which I think is pretty much everyone's. Yeah, well, almost I did, everyone's. I did think Birmingham prediction. at the start of the season, but like I said, now they've. Now they've changed the ownership. I do think that the negativity is going to lift a little bit, and I think they might just be able to drag themselves over that. But I won't be shocked to see them go down at all. Um, anyway, Nathaniel, thank you for coming on Turfcast. It's been an thank absolute pleasure. Much. Just before we do go, do you want to give everyone a shout and let them know where they can watch your stuff, listen to your podcasts, that sort of thing? Um, everywhere, really. Um, on YouTube, uh, I've got a, a podcast um, scheduled for um, well, this evening. Are we actually live? No. Oh, okay. Well, that won't really work then. But yeah, uh, um, YouTube, um, other places. I should really know this. Spotify, Apple, <laughs> yeah. maybe. But definitely yeah. uh, to Holland back on YouTube, and then you get to see our beautiful faces. Yeah. So just search to Holland back. I'm sure everything will come up. Work it out yourself. Yeah, yeah. Work it out. So Nathaniel, you've been great. You've been the probably the best spoken Hull fan I've ever heard in my life. By the way. Well, I don't have the accent. So that's no. Why. You don't. You don't have the accent. Um, it's been very good to talk to you though, mate. Um, enjoyed you coming on. Good luck for the rest of the season, except of course tomorrow and yeah, then later. Same in the season. to you. But, yeah, but I'm very interested to see how you get on because I do feel like you're similar to us yeah. by signing all the players and stuff. And uh, it's going to be interesting to see how, how you do this season. But thank you very much, mate. It's been a pleasure. And we'll see you probably later in the season.